All right, we've got a 2013, I believe, it's either 12 or 13, BMW X5. It is the one with the N55. That's more of the important uh, factor here. And this was uh, sent over to me from another shop. They did some work on it, uh, Valtronic motor, and had some issues after it was running. The main thing that they are after now, this, uh, this will start run and drive. But they have a check engine light, and it's throwing a code for the uh, pressure sensor, uh, and it's the one for that's located on the intake manifold. This has two, basically uh, a boost sensor right there on the charge pipe going into the throttle. This one's kind of like a map sensor on the intake manifold. Now, the one I have there is a spare one that I got. This is the manifold, and that is the one the vehicle came in with, and that keeps showing the code. Now, this guy here is the original. Is at this point. I have looked at it a uh, previous visit, and there seems to be a, as far as the trouble code, it's stating that it's shorted the uh, circuit for this pressure sensor so I did some testing uh, some swap tronics with the sensor and no change so I wanted to see if it's due to the DME basically and ultimately um, this harness is very short you can see it's right there and then it goes right into the uh, computer so I don't believe that anything is pinched but that's why I was checking and this is a three wire, so you can have a power feed, a signal, and then a ground. And this sensor here, the same thing, uh, but it has four wires. It's still power, signal, and ground. And then the fourth one is for temperature, going back to the uh, DME. But I can use that one to compare the power, ground, and signal and see what this looks like and the difference. So the key is on right now, and I'm going to do the power, ground, and we're power, signal, and then ground. Now the ground. All right, and then... to the known good that's the power that's the signal and that's the ground all right so I got the uh, DME out and that one basically showed that the signals were about the same or pretty much the same key on. Now, I was testing with this one, uh, which I have labeled. This is a spare one that I've got here at the shop. I'm going to install the original one in there and do the same test and show you what the circuit is on that pressure sensor. Okay, again, this is the one I had. The original one's back in the car. Let's key it up. And let's take a look at the... First, we'll look at the known good, the one on the charge pipe. So I'll do power, signal, ground. There's power. And now signal, and then now ground, and then now the one throwing the trouble code. So let's go with power, let's go signal, and then ground. There, 
is our difference. So this portion here is the no good. This one is the one that goes on the manifold. And clearly, all three pins, so power, signal, and ground, are all elevated to the same point. These are stepped just like we saw with the other DME. Now, this one, again, it's used. It's not, um, you can't just simply install a used one. It won't crank up or uh, it might crank, but you're not going to get the car started because of an immobilizer. You can just plug it in, key it up. If you want to test some of those, basically, uh, signals to, uh, in my instance, see about a shorted circuit. And clearly, we have identified that it is a DME internal problem, and they are going to need to replace that. So since we have basically identified the problem, I am going to go ahead and clone this one and install it, double check, and make sure we are good. In case you are curious, let's get you some numbers for a known good. So let's see the power and the signal with key on. They sit at, so, 1.9 and 4.9. And I'm betting the shorted one, all three of those are, yep, right at the 4.9. All right, so I've got both the MEs laid out here. Got my pinout information pulled up. I'm going to go ahead, set them up do the cloning and then kind of go from there. All right, so I'm finished with reading the uh, the donor's um, EEPROM and flash. Now, I want to do that just to have as a backup before I turn this one into the uh, vehicle's original one. This ISN, I decided to read and pull up. This is from the donor. So this is what we are going to want to see change. So for now, I'll go ahead, disconnect all these, transfer them to this um original one and i'll continue with doing the clone work and so this eventually will turn into this and we want this isn to change all right so we have read both the uh eprom and flash from the vehicle's original one let's read the isn All right, so there we go. That's the number that we are gonna want to see appear on the uh, the one that I am providing and uh, we'll want to read it and pull that. So if we get that, then we know we have uh, transferred all the info correctly. All right, so we've got the, both EEPROM and the flash uh, written successfully. Now is the point where we, let's see, read the ISN. And hopefully this would have changed from uh, my donors to the vehicle's original one. So I've got the last four digits written for both. And that way we can compare. So there we go, the 
donor. So what originally was in this one ended in DD09. And it should turn into FBA3. There we go. So successfully now I've cloned it over. Uh, we have made it to what the original one is. The one that was shorted out. Uh, let's plug this one in. Still have the intake off. Going to take a quick measurement with the scope. And um, hopefully this one will be fixed. Okay, so here's the original. I'm going to key it on. That one's already plugged in. Let's take a look. So... Right away, I'm going to the one that was bad. Here's the power. Okay. Signal. All right, looks like it's good. And then ground. All right. All right. So there we go. There's that. I'm going to go ahead and scan this. All right, let's take a look at the report. So, I'm going to clear the fault memory. Um, i got to put the intake and everything back together. Uh, and I think I'm going to do uh, programming just for uh, reassurance to get everything lined up. So, But uh, as far as the short circuit, that is gone. And we clearly verified with the scope. So, um, not sure if I'll film anymore. But uh, if not, hope you got something out of it as far as verifying and testing the circuit and instead of throwing parts at it uh, this is a good way to see it on the scope as to uh, the difference between known good and the faulted one with the bad signals so thank you for watching and that is all all right let's uh i got it all put back together let's uh crank it up there we go